film in the main Fast and Furious franchise, 11th film in the whole franchise. Um, this one once again stars Vin Diesel as Dominic Toretto, who now has a son and lives by basically protecting his son. But when the villain, Hernan Reyes, has a son played by Jason Momoa, Momoa uh, Momoa's uh, Dante character wants revenge for the events of Fast Five. So he tries to destroy the one thing that Dominic Toretto cares about, that is his family. Back from the films from Dom's original team, you have Letty, played by Michelle Rodriguez, Mia, played by Jordana Brewster, Roman, played by Tyrese Gibson, Tej, played by Ludacris, and Natalie Emanuel as Ramsey. Also back in the fray is John Cena as Dominic's brother Jacob from the last film. Deckard Shaw also makes an appearance, played by Jason Statham. Um, also back in a villain role is Charlize Theron as Cypher, who is now being basically overtaken by Dante in this movie, and she... Uh, the enemy of her enemy is her now friend in Dom to stop him. Also, you have Sun Kang back as Han on the main team. Helen Mirren returned as well as Queenie, uh, the mother of Deckard Shaw's character who continues to try to help Dominic Toretto. Scott Eastwood as Little Nobody. There's all, and uh, there's also new additions to the cast as well. Obviously, Jason Momoa in the lead villain role as Dante. Uh, you also have Brie Larson as Tess, the daughter of the Mr. Nobody character played by Kurt Russell. Alan Richson, who plays Ames, one of the new, who's taken over after Miss no Mr. Nobody disappeared in F9. Um, you also have Danielle Melikar, who plays Isabel, a Portuguese race driver, as well as Rita Moreno, who is the grandmother of the Toretto family. Uh, the film is two hours and 21 minutes long and is PG-13. We'll come back to this brand new review. we are talk about Fast X here on Max Talk. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and a box office breakdown show every week. So please subscribe, ring the bell. We're obviously going to break down this upcoming Monday, uh, Fast X's bo uh, box office this past weekend. Comment down below. First of all, if you're a fan of the Fast and Furious franchise, I am as well. Let me know your thoughts. What is your ranking of the Fast and Furious franchise? Even if you have not seen this one, um, did you like it? Did you not like it? Don't go into spoilers. Um, we could do a different video if you guys are interested in listening to a spoiler review of this movie. We can definitely do into it, but I do need you guys support. So comment down below if you want me to do a spoiler-filled review of F uh, FX, but uh, Fast X. But don't put those spoiler thoughts in the comment section down below. They will be deleted. Please also like the video. It helps the algorithm out so more people can watch this video. So. Uh, if you've been on the channel before, you know I am a fan of the Fast and Furious franchise. Again, it's a franchise I've basically um, grown up with since the very first Fast and Furious film, which took place all the way back in 2001. Again, I was born in 02, so this franchise has been around uh, since I was born, which is crazy now. 22 years now since the original film. Um, we've hit it. Obviously, this has kind of been a joke franchise for a lot of people that it's too ridiculous. It's too cartoonish, but... I really do think this franchise is definitely for a, a particular person. If you are into this type of stuff, if you like this franchise, you're probably going to like this movie. If you don't like this franchise, you probably won't like this movie. Um, I'll leave a video at the end of this review. I did a review for F9 when it came out two years ago, and I also did a, a my ranking of the Fast and Furious saga, so I'll leave that in there. As well, also another tad bit, a tidbit before I get into my positives, my negatives, and my score. There is a mid credit scene. Please, if you have not even seen it yet, uh, if you haven't seen the reports about it, don't listen to it. It's a big uh, and a mid credit scene, um, but don't go on social media. Don't go on. Don't go looking it up anywhere. Uh, I'll let you know now. Fast X does have a mid credit scene, so please, uh, it is sadly being spoiled to a lot of people. Uh, so watch out for that. So my overall positive is that I really did have a blast watching this movie, and this is definitely the most fun um, I've had in the main saga since Furious 7 back um, uh, all those years ago. I think it was 2015 is when um, F7, uh, Furious 7 came out. Um, and it is 2015. So seven year, uh, eight years ago now, which is crazy. Because um, I remember seeing that in the theater as well. So I think this is easily the best film for the main saga. I was not a big fan of Fate of the Furious. I think it's easily... Fate of the Furious in F9, I just wasn't that big of a fan of. I had fun enough i would say in f9 but i think fate of the furious for me really went too much off the rails and there wasn't enough of that drama that i liked in this franchise and then i think f9 really struggled balancing the ridiculousness and the drama um and vin diesel has been basically talking about that this is the first movie of a trilogy um, after reports were originally supposed to only go to 11 movies but uh based on how this film is this clearly is the setting up point of other movies um 
But again, I had a total blast. And I think the reason why you have a blast for me is Jason Momoa's new character um, of Dante. He is thoroughly entertaining from start to finish. I think it's an actor that a lot of people weren't sure of would be able to fit kind of the cartoonish uh, over the top miss of this franchise, but he absolutely chews up every single time that he is on screen. I think it's very similar to what Idris Elba brought to his character as the villain Hobbs and Shaw, but even more so here. Well, yes, Momoa is clearly over the top. He's clearly having a blast and he has a lot of fun quips. He is easily the funniest character in the entire movie. Um, and what's great about Momoa's performance that he can go from being that funny quips type of guy to then you taking him seriously that he could kill anyone in this movie, uh, that he is a legit threat. So he can to be a joke in one sense, but also has the balance of being funny and taken seriously as the villain. So I think this is easily might be the best villain in the Fast and Furious franchise. I am a fan of Deckard Shaw, who's my favorite character in this franchise, but this might be the strongest villain um, that this franchise has had in its obviously now 23, uh, 22 year run. Um, Vin Diesel always brings it as Dom and he clearly does as in this movie as well. Um, another big plus is that they finally let Charlize Theron kick some ass in this movie. Um, in Fate of the Furious, she's kind of just leveled as the tech person, the tech villain in Fate of the Furious. Then in F9, she was just in a glass box for the whole movie. And if you obviously know Charlize Theron, she is in a lot of action movies and can clearly be probably one of the best action people you can have in the franchise. And they give her multiple big time action set pieces that let her do her thing. So I was very happy to finally see them use Charlize Theron, I think, um, in the right way. As always, the team is very charming. Um, I don't think Tej, uh, Roman is just has gotten, for me, increasingly less funny as the franchise really has gone on. Uh, for him I think it was back with five and six and sometimes seven but I think since eight he's it's been a character I just haven't thought was funny but uh Ramsey obviously the whole team is great um a lot of the new characters feel like they're set up to do bigger things down the line especially Brie Larson's character um I thought she was going to be in the movie a lot more than I thought um but she was not uh and she was good while she was in it but she just wasn't in the movie enough Alan Richson um kind of plays the stereotypical guy i'll get to the negatives in a second but the movie overall is a lot of fun and that's because the action scenes there are tons and tons of them. there's not really a um, there are times to breathe in this movie but there are action scenes on top of action scenes on top of action scenes and i would say i was pretty much thoroughly entertained by every action scene in the movie it doesn't matter how ridiculous in this movie obviously it throws logic completely out of the window obviously if you've been with this franchise for 23 years uh, you know what this franchise has become now. And if you're not on board with that, then probably don't go see this movie. If you are, I think you're going to have a blast. There's a couple really good action scenes. There's a fight involving Cypher in the first act, which was really cool. I feel like one of the best action scenes I think this franchise has offered in a long time. Um, the Rome fight, I thought was also really fun to watch on screen. Um, there's a Rome. So I think the first act has some of the best action that this franchise has had in a long, long time. I think even back to Furious, to Fast Five, uh, some of the best action. So the action was fun. I found myself laughing throughout the entire, but overall, I just had a good time in the theater. I don't need all these big franchises to be taken so seriously. Uh, and yes, I, we'll talk about the negatives and what this franchise could do to change things in the next two films. But still, I had just tons of fun I'm sitting in an IMAX movie theater watching Fast X. I do have, as I said, a couple negatives. Yes, this movie is a bit too ridiculous. I, I do think the biggest problem, though, with this movie, which has been a big problem for the franchise for a long time, is that especially in this movie, there are just way too many things going on. And that's because there's just way too many characters to have to deal with. And, it's, and sometimes some of your favorite characters will just feel like they're on the sidelines, especially... Mia and Deckard Shaw are completely on the sidelines. Deckard Shaw kind of has one kind of sequence in the movie and then he's kind of done. Mia is in like the first 20, 30 minutes of the movie and then she's kind of forgotten about. So there are some characters that are going to be, you kind of excited for. Don't get your hopes up for some of these characters being heavily featured because not just are they bringing back basically all of the obviously living cast that's going on. Obviously it's, this franchise has not been the same since Paul Walker. Um, but back from the all the other movies, they added a lot of new characters. 
And while the performances are great, I actually really liked uh, Momoa, Brie Larson. I really actually like all the new characters. It gets to a point where there's just too many characters in this franchise. And a big problem with that is that they keep bringing a lot of these characters back from the dead, which has caused them all now being scrunched into a two hour and 20 minute runtime. So I think the past movies have kind of limited what this movie could be because there's just so many different things going on. There's a subplot with um, Tej, Roman, and Ramsey, and Han kind of doing their own thing. There's a subplot with Jacob with Dom's son, as Jacob is in, is tasked with taking um, Dom's son while Dom's doing this thing in Rome. Um, you have Cypher and Letty having their own subplot, and then you have obviously the main one with Dom, um, with um, Jason Momoa and Danielle Melkar and Brie Larson and Alan Richson. So there's a lot of subplots and there's a lot of characters and it gets a bit, it just is overloaded in this movie um, because there's sometimes you'll just forget that a subplot is even going on. They'll come back to it and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot this is actually in this movie. So I did really feel like they needed to kind of trim the fat and maybe either if you're going to have this many characters, maybe connect them more into one story, but there are four or five just completely different subplots going on um, that all just don't, feel that important to this movie it could in the next two movies um uh, another big problem is that the movie kind of just ends i was kind of shocked it's it's kind of a cliffhanger ending because it's clearly setting up but it doesn't completely finish feel like a finished film um this film obviously could improve or decrease based on what the next two films do with what this movie ends on um but it's basically just like the movie kind of just ends uh not that satisfying of an ending um, it got me really excited for the next two movies, but it just felt a weird spot to end the movie. Um, as I said, it's overloaded. It's a weird spot to end the movie. And at times the ridiculousness is, is it's it's too much sometimes. Um, and I think the Roman character for me has kind of been on a downturn. I like Tyrese. I, I do want to keep seeing Tyrese um, in this franchise, but Roman Pierce, I think, needs a bit more original jokes uh, to keep this franchise going. Um Overall, I had a fun time with Fast X. Uh, you could pick this movie to pieces, but for me, I had a blast. The cast is fantastic. The characters I care about. Um, and it's a world that I like, and the action for me works, and I just had a, a total blast watching it. There's too many characters in this movie, though, that it gets a bit overbearing at times. The emotion just doesn't really hit as much, especially the particular character choices. Um, characters like don't really feel emotional that much throughout the film, so I would have liked a bit more emotion when big things tend to happen towards the third act of the movie. Um, and at times it is a bit too ridiculous. But overall, I'm going to get Fast X a 3.5 um, out of 5. I am going to go 65% for Fast X. I had a blast. Um, what are your thoughts? Comment section down below. Like the video. More videos are coming soon. I'll see you soon.